How to draw a line of best fit. Recently, my students in my math models class performed an experiment where they tested the load bearing capacity of bridges constructed with paper. The bridges were of different lengths. The students placed stacks of pennies in the center of the bridges to find out how many pennies each bridge of different lengths could support before collapsing. This is a table of data collected from one such experiment. We're going to plot the data on graph paper. We first label our independent quantity on the horizontal axis, and that is bridge length. We see that we go as high as 11 here on the input data, and see that we have 15 squares available here on the horizontal axis to work with. Therefore, it makes sense to use one square for every inch of bridge length, so we'll draw the axis and let each square count as one. I numbered every two units. With that done, we turn our attention to the data from our dependent quantity, the number of pennies, until bridge collapse. Over here on the vertical axis, we have 20 squares available to us. If we went to 1 every 2 squares, dividing 41 by 2, we would need slightly over 20 squares, which we don't quite have. So instead, we'll let 4 squares represent 10 pennies to be sure we can get all the data plotted within our available graphing area. We plot our first point by going to 6 on the bridge length, our horizontal axis, then going up vertically from there, then we go to 41 on the vertical axis, and go to the right horizontally, then we plot our point where the vertical and horizontal intersect. That's as close as I could get to it. We use the same process for the 8-inch bridge. We plot the point for the 9-inch bridge. And we finish up by plotting our point for the 11-inch bridge. What do we notice about this plotted data? Since it goes down from left to right, we determine that a, a negative correlation between bridge length and pennies required to collapse it. In other words, the longer the bridge span, the less weight it is able to bear or carry. Let's draw a line of best fit for the points. This is what some students first did when asked to draw a line of best fit. Is there something wrong with this? Yes, this is not a line, but rather three line segments. This is an example of connect the dots. We're going to have to leave that back in kindergarten. A line of best fit is a single line that matches all the points as well as possible. First, get a ruler and line up the points as well as possible, and draw the line, which looks something like this. If we wanted to, we could use the point slope formula for a line, y minus y1 equals m times the quantity x minus x1. We would pick out two points from the line of best fit, one here at 9, 22.5, and another here at 7, 32.5. We place the two points into a table. It doesn't matter which point is on the top or on the bottom. We draw the arrows on each side of this, each of the sides. Next, we calculate the differences. On the left, 9 minus 7 is 2, and on the right, 22.5 minus 32.5 is negative 10. Our slope or rate of change is right over left or negative 10 over 2. And that equals negative 5, which is our slope or rate of change for the line of best fit we drew. And with that slope, we can use it to get the equation of a line with the point slope form. The negative 5 goes here in place of the m. And then we replace the x1 and y1 in the formula with the numbers from any coordinate pair on the line. So we put the 22.5 from this point here in place of y1, and we use the x-coordinate 9 to replace x1 here, and here is the equation with the numbers replaced. Using the distributive property, we have negative 5x plus 45 on the right side of the equation. Then we add 22.5 to both sides of the equation and end up with y equals negative 5x plus 67.5. With this hand-drawn line of best fit and the equation it made, we can use it to make predictions. In this case, how many pennies it would take to collapse bridges of different lengths. This has been How to Draw a Line of Best Fit. Thanks for viewing.